Human rights are the fundamental rights that give people a feeling of dignity. Denial of human rights is an attack on the dignity of us as Aboriginal people. Canada continues to abuse Aboriginal rights and violates international human rights and treaty obligations by modifying our Aboriginal rights model to acquire exclusive land ownership. Extinguishment of Aboriginal rights and title is a corrupt violation of our human rights and an attack against our human dignity that will impoverish our children, grandchildren, and all future generations. The issues or matters of Indigenous people have that stem from the fact that we were here before the establishment of British Columbia and of Canada. And uh, the rights that are uh, recognized as stemming from that point and that uh, we do not have to ask the federal or the provincial government for permission or permits or agreement to do those things, things like uh, hunting and fishing. Also, Aboriginal title is, is one of the rights that the, the Supreme Court recognized was a, a collective property right of Indigenous people to their land. And people in British Columbia have always fought for recognition of, their, of our land rights, our fundamental land rights. It goes back way before the court cases and right back to the beginning of, you know, colonization here in, in British Columbia. Despite all the efforts of the uh, colonizers and of the governments, the Supreme Court uh, ruled in December 11, 1997, despite all those initiatives, none of them ever did terminate or extinguish or destroy in, in Indian land rights, and that uh, those land rights continue to exist, which really puts the government in a very vulnerable position because they're liable for using this land to us as, as indigenous people and they know that. The government's position is no, we don't want to include any form of recognition for indigenous people. Our objective is to keep indigenous people impoverished through not recognizing the, our rights to any of our property. And that's the violation. That's the human rights violation. The human rights violation is where the federal and provincial government mutually, exclusively, 100% make decisions with regard to our land because that's why we're poor. We're not poor because our land is poor. You know, take a look at Vancouver. You guys own Vancouver here. But is, are you the people that are living like the people in the rich part of town? No, you're not. It's because they control access and benefits with regard to your land and resources in the Vancouver area. And that's why you're poor. And the, what the United Nations is saying is that we don't want you to extinguish their land rights because once you extinguish their land rights, what you're going to is, do is entrench their poverty. The poverty they're experienced through your non-recognition of their land rights and that will be a violation of their human rights forever. One of the, the things that they're using you know, is silence by a lot of our leadership. It's a big danger is like that hundred million dollars that the uh, Gordon Campbell gave to the Leadership Council. I think that's a, it bought a, a deafening sort of silence because these leaders should be talking about how the modified rights model is going to terminate the land rights of the people of Tuasin, how it's going to terminate the land rights of the people of the Letle Dene, how it's going to terminate the rights of the people of the Manalf. You know, they should be talking about that because those things are clearly spelled out in agreement, but nobody's going around talking about and showing the actual provisions of how those things are going to be terminated, like the people in Tuasin are literally going to be giving their existing reserve to the province of British Columbia. It says it right in the agreement, and they're going to get that land back in terms of fee simple. It's the highest form of private ownership in, in the white man's system. 
property, it'd be taxable, it would be seizable if you don't pay your taxes. The government will be responsible for seizing it from you and selling it off for the taxes. So one or two families are going to benefit from that. And they're going to be able to buy off all the land from the rest of the people on the reserve. And next thing you know, everybody's going to wind up moving to Vancouver because they're going to wind up homeless. They place right at the bottom. Canada is the one that's on the Human Rights Council. First big issue to come in front of it was the, uh, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And uh, Canada voted against the acceptance of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, or DRIP. You know, they, they voted against it. It could be done just by Indian people stopping negotiating. Now is the time to solve it because for the first time we've pushed them to that limit. You know, they're at the BC Treaty negotiating table trying to swindle us out of our lands through this modified rights model because they know they have to deal with it. We need to have strong leadership from the people at the community level, people who want to reduce and eliminate the poverty that we've been experiencing, stop the violation of the human rights of our people, and have the Canadian government comply with the decision of the United Nations Human Rights Council. We as a people have to become aware of that. We have to become educated about that and we have to challenge that because if we don't, nobody else will. Which means that regardless of what goes on here in British Columbia and Canada with regard to anything, whether it be mineral development, hydro development, or anything like that, we have a property interest in everything right since the beginning of Aboriginal title, going right back to 1846. We have a property right in, in that, in those interests in the federal government and the provincial government owe us that money.